Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Arts Council's Your Town TV, which features renowned arts and cultural leaders throughout our region who are dedicating themselves to improving the lives for everyone through the arts. Joining me today is Dr. Ron Friedman, who is chair of the board of directors of the Carmel Classic Guitar Society which recently changed its name to the Carmel Guitar Society. So welcome, Ron. Well, thank, thank you, you so much me. for joining us today. So I read on your website that the guitar was the first instrument brought into California, brought by the Spaniards. Tell us about a little bit, if you know, about that history and how it's informed your society. Well, I'm not an expert on the history of guitar in California per se, but I certainly know a lot about the history of classical guitar, which evolved from an instrument in the, the Renaissance period called the lute. And the lute was an instrument that looked like a big gourd with a bent neck, and it had uh, f uh, four courses or four rows of two strings apiece, and it was a, a challenging instrument to play. And uh, the, the courtiers of kings and, and other royalty would play them to sleep at night with the lute and a lot of our early music actually comes from the lute repertoire. Now somewhere around the late 1600s, early 1700s, uh, a guitar was evolved from that which was called the chitara and it was uh, the predecessor of our modern day guitar. Uh, more recently the classical guitar that we now play has evolved from about uh, the mid-1850s, uh, a gentleman named uh, Torres developed the first classical guitar that it would be a close sim a similarity to what we play today with six strings. Uh, four of those are nylon strings, four of those are steel strings, and it has the ability to be played with your right hand as a plectrum or finger picking and your left hand on the neck of the guitar. And since that period of time, we've evolved multiple classes of music for classical guitar. We have the Renaissance period, which was the early period. Then we had the, the Baroque period, which is the period that would include Bach and Beethoven. Uh, the music had a lot of flavor of counterpoint. And then there was the Romantic period during Torres, where uh, great writers such as Tarega were writing music, many of which were performed by Segovia. Mm -hmm. And then we had the classical period, and now we finally have the modern period where there are many great writers uh, composing for the classical guitar, uh, similar to what we would consider new age music. I hope that doesn't make a short story long. I know, but. that's a great history of the guitar. So many young people especially are interested in learning the guitar. Tell us about the work of the Carmel Guitar Society, what your uh, programs are, how you work in the community. Well, our society was started in 1961 by a, a group of uh, guitarists just uh, uh, half to one generation ahead of me that were mostly accomplished performers, uh, Terence Farrell uh, uh, and a, f a few other uh, performers throughout the Carmel area, well known for its arts, decided to form a, gla a classical guitar society. And what they did was they had meetings and they performed. And then through that evolved a society with other members and a couple of programs. The two programs that have been most recently uh, involved with our society are, one, the Healing Arts Program, which is uh, still very much in, in mm -hmm. activity today, and the second program was the Guitar in Schools. Mm -hmm. And this was a program uh, particularly well suited for California where the arts money has been uh, decreased in many of the schools, where we would go in and teach children about classical guitar. We'd play music and we would teach them about a guitar and stimulate some interest in playing the guitar. And we would go uh, make a little assembly music program, whatever schools would have us, and for an hour uh, play some music and teach the students about classical guitar. And that program was funded through many grants. Mm -hmm. In fact, our entire nonprofit organization is funded mostly, if not completely, through grants and has done uh, very well up until recently. Uh -huh. So you're facing financial challenges. It's interesting that the Arts Council, which is so deeply involved in arts education in the schools, began about two to three years ago, Music for All Monterey County. Mm. And in this scenario, we have a benefactor who believes so much in the benefits and power of music education for young people people, for children in grades K through 12. What have you seen about the transformative power of teaching a child a musical instrument? 
Well, I, um, I'm not personally an, an instructor. Uh, my duo partner, uh, Anthony Demers, is probably the leading instructor for, for young students who play classical guitar and other kinds of guitar uh, in, in, Monter in the Monterey area. But certainly, I've taken my children through, through, through music, and uh, my daughter, who uh, started playing piano and then subsequently flute, and now f ultimately classical guitar, has emulated uh, my uh, love of, of musical instruments. Um, of course, children can often start on things and have trouble pursuing because of other things in their life. And, mm -hmm. But if you give them the foundation for music, they can pick it up later in life and feel that it's coming back to them rather than starting fresh. So you have had a, an extraordinary career. You're a doctor, a physician, and so how did you marry the being a doctor with your love of um, music and the guitar in particular? Well, I guess similar to this, the story about my daughter, I started playing um, regular guitar, steel string guitar, electric guitar when I was a teenager, and I played in a little band. Uh -huh. and then got carried away in school and other activities. And it wasn't until my residency in, uh, uh, residency training in New York City that I decided to pick up a guitar again, and I re-self-taught myself to play classical guitar. And I found it very much a balancing, a balancing part of my life, as I still do 38, 40 years later, because I firmly believe that the two sides of the brain need to have stimulation. And we, we all know that in... Uh, most of our pursuits in life, we use the left side of the brain. It's the it's the calculating part. It's the um, the written language part. It's the business part. It's the numerical part. And then there's the right side of the brain, which is the the arts part, the the music part, the the visual arts. And when you play an instrument like I do, and spend a lot of time calculating numbers for people's cataract surgery and laser vision correction, you realize that both parts of the brain uh, are, are functioning independently. Mm -hmm. And every day I wake up and start playing music at about 6.15 in the morning. And it wakes up the right side of the brain in, a, in, a, in, a, in almost a magical way. Uh, and many musicians have echoed this as my patients. I've discussed this, uh, this phenomena, that you can be playing a song that's being run by the right side of the brain, and your left side of the brain can be independently thinking about something completely different. And you can finish the song and realize, I didn't concentrate for one second on what I just played. I was thinking about something else. And mm. it's, a, it's a really tremendous way to realize that both sides of the brain can function independently. I suppose each of us can experience that when we listen to music and may be involved in for me, a writing activity and deep focus in my writing. Right. So I can well understand that. But right. you've touched upon something that is very important to us and to the Guitar Society, which is the arts as a power, a force in healing. And the Guitar Society runs a healing arts program. Will you tell us about that, please? We're very proud of it, and we're very proud of the sponsors we've had uh, throughout the years. Um, as you well know, Community Hospital has always had music. Uh, uh, musicians come in to play by their koi pond, and then harpists and other musicians come around to various patients' rooms. And there is um, two aspects of it. I, I think for us in, in, in the healing guitar, we're, on one hand, providing entertainment for people who can't get out. When we, for example, play at the Ave Maria Convalescent Home mm -hmm. uh, or Carmel Hills Professional, uh, all the, uh, the patients there are wheeled in in wheelchairs, and they're certainly not going out to catch live performances at yeah. the Sunset Center or mm -hmm. the State Theater. And we are literally providing them entertainment on one hand. On the, on the other hand, we're, we're providing for the hour we play, or a little over an hour, uh, distraction from, from, from their ailments, from the pain and suffering that they have from the various conditions that have either put them in the hospital or put them in the, in the senior mm -hmm. care facility. Uh, so it's a wonderful feeling, and it's, it's, it's very rewarding to those of us who do it, um, both my partner and I who play as a duo, and for Richard Devink, who is a very active uh, participant of the Healing Guitar Program plays classical guitar so, by himself. So how often do you get out into the community to do these performances? Well, you know, we basically play everything until the money runs out. Um, <laughs> okay. uh, it's, it sounds 
<laughs> it sounds uh, supercilious, but we are in such demand with all the places we play mm -hmm. in Monterey, Carmel, uh, uh, Salinas, Salinas Valley, that we can play between the two different groups 10 to 12 times a month. Wow. Uh, but, it, you know, we need to be sponsored because uh, my partner's taking time off from teaching, I'm taking time off from work, and Richard's taking time off from work. and. Uh, we're not professional musicians in that sense, but mm -hmm. we need to be, you know, taken care of for the time we take. Although it is partly volunteer because it can never fully compensate for the, you know, time we take off. Right. So we we do play probably so sixty seventy times a year. Wow, that's a, yeah. a lot. So you also have a program in the schools, the guitar in the schools program. So tell us about that, and have you ever used any of the children learning guitars to go to these places to perform? Um, once, recently. Okay. Um, and not uh, my partner who teaches classical guitar brought some of his students to play uh, and during the Christmas in the Adobes recently, which was uh, a nice event held in one of the, uh, the local venues for that. The guitar in schools really is an introduction. It's an introductory course uh, to schools that have very limited or no music programs. Uh, we've had some some problems recently with it, uh, partly because of uh, decreasing funding, but also because the schools are not letting us have the time. Oh my gosh! I know it's, and this has just been in the last couple years, where we are trying to arrange to come in, and they say, well, we can't work it in our schedule to get a, to get a uh, uh, an auditorium. So uh, unfortunately, that program faltered uh, last year, and uh, I'm not sure you know what the future is going to be. Uh, we certainly support it as musicians. We would definitely take the time, those of us who are participants in the Guitar Society, to mm -hmm. do it. But if they won't let us come... I'm surprised. We yeah. have to work with the Arts Council on that because we certainly have a number of schools that are asking for the arts. So you have the Arts is Healing and hopefully more of the art guitar in the schools. What else does the Society do? Well, we sponsor musicians to come. We, uh, we, we sponsor concerts. We have a number of uh, independent sponsors that help us bring artists from throughout the country. And normally we do three to four events uh, a year. We have a wonderful patron who offers her house for a house concert. And we have a couple of venues, uh, such as Hidden Valley, that have been very generous to us in offering their venue at nominal expense. Mm -hmm. And we, we actually have brought world-renowned guitarists um, such as Andrew York, uh, the L.A. Guitar Quartet, uh, in recent years for general public to buy tickets and come hear well, the music that we love so so much. Uh, you know, because of our limited uh, budget, we normally can only do three, maybe four events a year. So are there ways that the public can help you um, shore up your financial underpinning by not only contributing, but are there events we can hire you for? Tell us about the well, ways people help you. Yes, yes, and yes. <laughs> <laughs> the simplest thing is that we have uh, we have a web page, the Carmel Guitar Society, and we have a Facebook page, the Carmel Guitar Society. You can certainly like the like the Facebook page, and then I put on uh, all the events that are that are happening, and they are all open to the public. In addition to that, we hold mixers. Uh, uh, in between the public concerts that are mostly for the members of the Guitar Society, but are tremendous. We, a lot of us have you know, uh, s enough talent that we can entertain each other for a good hour in a venue, uh, and it's almost a fight to see who plays next. Mm -hmm. uh, we just had an incredible Christmas concert where we had a couple of visiting artists uh, pop in with an accordion and a violin, mm -hmm. and it, it was mind-blowing it really was uh, so we, we we do attract you know other talent outside of just classical guitar I also play flute and perform with my my duo partner so we we mix it up a little bit so uh -huh. so to speak so uh, yeah we you can always find out about the events on the Facebook page uh, you can join our guitar society there's a nominal dues that puts you on our emailing list so that you get first uh, notice of any of the events that we have mm -hmm. and your website is uh, probably CarmelGuitarSociety.org. Uh -huh. We're not hard to find. No, I'm sure not. <laughs> so you've touched on a number of points, and most salient for the Arts Council, of course, is turning the tide somewhat from the STEM, which is where you began, to the STEAM, where the arts are integrated 
into the child's education. What other benefits can you mention along those lines for the children, young well, people? What do they get out of learning a musical instrument? They get the joy of, of, of music, the joy of, 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 of exploring a part of themselves that's different from their, from their general education. They get the, 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 the joy of uh, being able to play a musical instrument. And we, and we do have a, a lot because uh, a lot of our, my partner's students come to our events and, and bring their guitars, and we have recitals for them as well, mm -hmm. in addition to everything else we mentioned. It's not strictly part of the Guitar Society, but it's closely linked to us because mm -hmm. Uh, my partner Anthony does uh, participate in the board and and at any given recital that he holds there are 20 students aged 4 to oh, 44 wow. playing playing music so it gives a, it gives an avenue for uh, not only learning the instrument but expressing performing and and increasing your self-confidence in music as well as everything else in life so if I wanted to become involved, how would I become involved? And do you have any immediate future event or immediate event coming up? Uh, like us on Facebook, um, uh, through our webpage, join a, the Guitar Society. And yes, we have a visiting artist from Italy coming to play on March the 19th. Uh, we have a great venue that's perfect for adults. It's a it's a wine tasting room uh -huh. that seats about forty people with great acoustics, and the wine's pretty good too. Uh -huh. And so, <laughs> any parting words that you have for our audience about the Guitar Society and the value of the society and your efforts and initiatives in our community? Well, we're happy to have a very strong board of uh, directors right now uh, that that put our heads together to try and create all these events and to create uh, an, a good facade for the for the public. Uh, we want to continue the outreach. We want to continue um, soliciting grants so that we can increase our healing guitar uh, and, and hopefully continue the, the guitar in, in schools. Uh, you know, we're now uh, 40, uh, 50, 57 years old in this community, so hopefully we're not, we're not going away. I, I, Anytime soon. I can't imagine that you would <laughs> because we know how much the Qatar Society has contributed to the arts and cultural vibrancy in our region as well as individually. I've heard um, Richard and Terrence, not you yet, mm -hmm. perform, so it gives us great joy. Well, thank you for having us. And well, thank you very much for being with us. And for everyone, please do check out the Carmel Guitar Society's Facebook page and website. And happy strumming and happy listening to all.